This question that we're looking at is number 11 in exercise 70. Okay. So the question says, if you have it there, um, in fact, I'm pretty much sure I remember everything from this. It's a unit circle. It's a unit circle. And you have a particle or an object or a point, and it's doing this. It is moving in an anti-clockwise direction. And I believe the speed they give you is 2 meters per second around the circumference. Okay? So this thing is moving around and around and around and around. They say this is the unit circle, but uh, because we're dealing with meters per second, they say, okay, let's put some units on this. So they call that 1 meter. You've got 1 meter up here, and I guess this would be negative 1 meters, question mark. Anyway, we're not dealing with units here, we're dealing with actually meters. That's kind of convenient. So then the question becomes, if we consider the particle just on the top half of the circle, um, if you want to think about the bottom half, you'll see in a minute it ends up being exactly the same thing, but in reverse. If the particle were just thinking about it on the top half of the circle, the top semicircle, what is the particle's rate of change horizontally? How is x changing as this guy moves around and around the circle? Okay? In fact, the exact word he says, um, find an expression for the rate of change of its x-coordinate. I'm going to call this um, a point, so I'm going to call it p. Um, find the expression for the rate of change of its x-coordinate in terms of x when the point is above the x-axis. So that's this top semicircle, like I was saying. So this thing is moving. How is it moving? Okay. So this is a tricky question. There are lots of parts to it. It's deceptively simple. The setup is deceptively simple. I want a rate of change for the x coordinate, right? So, and it's with respect to time. So, where am I headed? What should my last line be? What actual variable am I after? I want dx on dt, right? A pencil case? Was there a pencil case? What does it look like? Oh, it's that black one? Yeah, Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Where were we? Um, now then, one. Dx on dt. That's what I'm after, right? How is x changing with respect to time? So let's just write that down for a second. I want dx on dt. This is um, this is my goal. This is where I'm headed. Okay. Now, as we looked at with the sand pile that was growing, right? You have your goal. But this is like the amount of information we've got is actually quite far removed from this. Okay, they've told us, and I've put it here on the diagram, that it's moving um, two meters per second around the circumference. Now, this is not a horizontal mo motion or an upward motion; some combination of those, and it's actually changing the direction all the way around. So the question is, what actual derivative, what quantity do I have? What does this number two? What's it equal to in this situation? Now, I'll give you an answer in a second. But part of the problem here is that we don't really have, we, we lack the notation and we lack the labels to really talk um, in a concrete, rigorous way about what is actually changing. Like, what is the, um, I think we all know, it's d something on dt, right? It, something is changing with respect to time. Uh, it's meters per second. But the question is, what is the thing that's changing? Any takers? What do you reckon? Mm. What do you think? Is it tangential velocity? Okay, so you're talking about like a, uh, the fact that it's changing oh. direction all the way around. So if I drew, and this is actually not going to help us, but I want us to understand what Rana is talking about. If I drew a tangent here, right, at that particular instant of time, that's the direction the particle's moving. Yeah? And if I drew a tangent here, at that particular instant in time, that's where the particle's moving. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I'm going to understand that, but abandon it, is because this, this is like, well, it's a gradient, isn't it? But this is a distance. So gradient is changing, but it's, it's not this. This is not what that is talking about. Um, Nikita, do you want to have a shot? Arc length. Okay, arc length. How about arc length? Can we go with this? Now, the problem for me is I don't really have any arcs. I'm wondering, I have a whole bunch of arcs on the circle. Which arc am I talking about? I kind of need to define one, right? Um, so where I've drawn this, um, this point, right, I could have said, well, it's got to be on the top half of the circle. So what if I like started here? 
that's the lowermost point over here. Because remember, I'm going anti-clockwise. So I can't, I can't start here because then he's going to go on the bottom side, which I don't want to do. So if I start there, he's um, forming an arc like this. Right? Do you agree with that? And this arc, as time progresses, this arc should get longer and longer and longer until it gets all the way to a full semicircle. Right? <coughs> now, the reason why this is useful is because this is a curved leg. And that's exactly what this 2 meters per second is referring to, okay? how fast it's going around the edge. So in order to talk about this, well, I need to give this a name. What do we usually call an arc length? L. Let's name this L, which means that this 2 meters per second constant velocity I was given before is dl on dt. OK, so I'm going to say that's, that's 2. Hmm. So this is where I'm headed. This is what I know. So somehow I've got to connect arc length to this x business, right? Which is which is where this is going horizontally. Now think, think, think for a moment. What bridges am I going to use? And I am saying bridges, plural, in order to get from something I know, arc length, up to x. Hmm. Any takers? Yeah. Um, between um, the angular velocity and the arc length. So using the form of RL. Okay, sure. So, so I'm in a circle, yeah? One of the only things we know about arc length is you can find the arc length of an um, inner circle if you know two things. You need to know the radius, which I do happen to know. And what was the other thing you need to know? You need to know the angle subtended at the centre by your arc, yes? If you know r and theta, well, lucky for you, L equals r theta. That's good. So I can go from L to theta, right? The arc length and the angle subtended at the centre, they're connected to each other. So I can do some dl, d theta, I can use chain rule somehow to change the variable there. That's good, but I'm still not there. Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to get from L to theta using radian measure, right? And then I'm going to go from theta to x by taking advantage of the fact that this is not just any circle, this is the unit circle, right? So therefore, I have a parametric representation for this that connects the angle subtended at the center with the x coordinate, namely cos theta. Okay. So good, I've got, the, I've got the essay outline mapped out in my head. Now I'm ready to actually solve this question. Right? So here is where I am going to begin. You suggested to me we should use this L equals R theta business first. Okay? And that will connect these two quantities, sorry, these two quantities together. Okay? So I'm going to say L equals R theta, provided that, you know, let L be the arc length how would you describe this thing? That length there. I suppose it would be the arc length traced out after some number of some amount of time, right? So the arc length traced out by the particle. Or well, actually, what do they say? What's the word they use? Is it a point? There you go. Traced out by the point. This variable we've introduced it, so we better define it. Okay. So L equals R theta, but of course this is the unit circle, so R is equal to 1. Okay, cool. That's, that's good. All right. Now how do I use this? Hmm. I know DL on DT, that was given to me in the question, and I want to get to DX on DT. So how am I going to use this and hop onto my L to theta bridge? What am I going to do here? Um, L and theta, apparently, are always equal to each other, right? So that means when L changes by 1, theta should change by, change by 1, right? In other words, dL and d theta, with L and theta the same, then dL and d theta are also the same. Does that make sense? So therefore, if I were to, say, take this line and differentiate both sides with respect to time... Bless you. That gives me this statement. Do you see what I've done? Differentiated both sides. This is clean. Whenever L is changing, theta is changing at exactly the same rate because in the, in the unit circle, L and theta are exactly the same. This is why we love radians. They make working with circles so easy. Okay? So this is handy because I actually know what DL and DT is. Right? So now I can say, therefore, D theta on DT equals 2 because that's what I was told in the question about DL and DT. So far, so good. 
Okay, excellent. I've used my L to theta bridge, and now I've got to go from theta to x. So I need the relationship between those two, right? So I'm going to say, but what's the relationship between x and theta? We said it before, right? x equals 2? Good. I'm going to say x equals cos theta on the unit circle, right? Like, where does this come from? Where, just like before, I introduced L, so I have to define it. I've introduced theta, so I'm going to define it. All you need to say is the angle at the center. I mean, you can be fancy, and you can say the angle is subtended by L from blah, 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 but if you have a diagram, it's there, and this sentence just makes it clear. I'm not just plucking this out of nowhere. 